Hey everyone, happy Monday. It is that time of the month again and Astrid and I are going to go live. I'm just waiting to see her. Ah, there she is. Let's see. Let's see. Wait. How do I get her? Why can't Facebook so, be so much easier with this, with getting people to join? It wasn't as difficult. Let's see, I just invited her to join. But I am, ah, that was easy. All right, now I gotta move the camera back. Hi, everyone. So happy oh. to be here, hi. Hi, wait, let me just shut this. I'm so happy to see you again. How are you doing? It's been a while. Oh, it's so great. I'm so happy to do this with you to um, open people's minds and hearts um, that anything is possible. Yeah, I'll let you start the whole story. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, Ashton and I, if you haven't been watching, we've been doing this every month. And unfortunately, last month, I got so sick, lost my voice. Um, but we're back. And Ashton sent me a message saying how she wanted to do something with Cherry. And I'm like, awesome, I love this idea. And I didn't want to do something like a cherry smoothie because I feel like it's so common or talk about adding cherries to oatmeal because I don't know, I just feel like everyone does that. So I came up with an idea of what we're gonna do with cherries that's something a little bit different. But I'd love for Astrid to talk a little bit about her cherries and about making you know, life's a little sweeter with cherries. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I'm going to quickly say hi, who I am, and why am I on yeah. live? <laughs> so, um, Stacey is all about helping cancer patients thrive through food, right? And um, I am a thriver. Actually, I consider myself a thriver. I don't even use the word survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stage four and now I have zero breast cancer stage four and now I have zero cancer present yeah. I am literally thriving and I started uh, thriving through cancer already and what I personally mean by that is um, to get my feet on the rails of um, feeling uh, good and better as best as I can moment by moment and feeling in charge of my, taking charge of my healing, um, not just for my body healing, but I had this moment in my journey where I realized like, no, I'm doing everything, um, mm -hmm. body, mind, spirit, soul, um, also my emotions. I actually chose joy as my decision to seek joy and create joy whenever I can. And not just the superficial joy, but actually um, look at what might be in the way of joy, where might I need to change life and all those things. And so I, um, uh, like 10 days ago, I woke up with this dream of cherries when I thought about <laughs> our life it was uh it was a strong symbolism for me it's like we'll we'll talk about cherries and my uh what i do is actually living a life like cherry on top kind of life and i um i did a lot of mindset work and i help uh help other patients now uh to also thrive and um uh i want to quickly say um if you want to look this up as to um, what I just said is whole body, mind, spirit, soul thing. There's a really fascinating book uh, about radical remission. That's the title of the book. Um, and in there, it says there are nine things that all radical, uh, radically remission patients who got well from really intense cancer and sometimes like with death sentences and all that, mm -hmm. um, they all have in common, like nine things that they all have in common. And um, some of them were that they um, actually address not just the body healing, but body, mind, spirit, soul, like all of it, all of it, mm -hmm. and healing emotions. And nutrition is also <laughs> one of them, changing their nutrition. So Stacey is here for that part. I'm yeah. here for the mindset part. Um, and uh, the cherry on top thing, I wanted to 
quickly, I'm, oh, by the way, I'm also an author. <laughs> Permission <laughs> article is my book. Um, and it's all about this thriving concept as well in any area of your life, whether you're for wellness or uh, for abundance or love or whatever you want. Um, it starts with this mindset and catching old mind stories, emotions, and, and, and that helped me to, um, to walk strong. And so with a cherry analogy, I want to quickly share something because I would love yeah. for you who are um, uh, open to this topic and seeking for um, ways to thrive. I want you to walk away with something that will really, um, really uh, help you to have an action prompt <laughs> and not just like la 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 and then you go. <laughs> on doing the things that you have been doing that might not have been making you feel so good mm -hmm. so something um that can make you feel good <laughs> um and the thing is the beginning um uh is you have to be open so if you want to have the mindset piece and get that mindset piece of feeling free and empowered um with your emotions, feeling good emotions and not fearful and all that stuff um first thing is simply to be curious and open and what I mean by that is um, be curious in every moment if something feels healing to you or if it does not. And that can literally be down to if, if somebody says something, um, uh, does that feel good to you? Does that feel healing to you personally or does it not? Um, and I want to, I have a, uh, an important short uh, reference that I want to make um, specifically for breast cancer. And Stacey, do you want me to go back afterward and do the recipe first or do you, can I? No, no, keep going, keep going. <laughs> okay, so, so with this mindset uh, piece, um, I recently came across um, a really interesting observation uh, in the whole in so many different cancer groups uh, where women are there to support each other and, and men also, like we're all like, we're trying to find a way to thrive and to to um, survive, although I don't use that word, but we're trying a way to, to live, right? And make it. And um, there, uh, there's, there are different mindsets you can uh, adapt for yourself. And many people, um, adapt the, the mindset of fighting and, and sometimes it gets really extreme i see some people say like kick its ass and cancer is the devil and all those <laughs> things. and so i actually didn't do any of that i became really mindful of words and how they make me feel what mindset feel makes me feel healthy and um i i chose i i see it like as a choice like you can choose to fight and like see it as a an enemy a or or you can choose to um see it as a catalyst and be open and like okay so yes this is something that i don't want in my body obviously right because i want to live but what might this be an opportunity for for me to do better in life what can i do for myself to live what can I, what can this be a catalyst for and so with that question like for me it actually in every moment i asked i focused on what what feels healing to me what feels joyful and uh, what words feel healing all that stuff right and so um fight or or a catalyst and so I'm not saying that all fights are bad but it's really a discernment for you to um, to see how does it feel for you in your body are you in constant war mode for yourself like oh I have to fight this evil thing that's survival mode that is not when we thrive in our body um, there's a lot of science around that we can do that for a short amount of time of sprinting of getting over challenging things right mm -hmm. um, but long term, that is exhausting, and it doesn't really fully allow our body to recover. And um, we want to use our energy for wellness, for healing, and to give our body rest. And uh, if you activate the vagus nerve system, mm -hmm. you can look that up too. Those are all mm -hmm. the things: meditation and finding inner peace and embracing mind stories that don't serve you, letting those go. So. Yeah you have the energy to heal so that allowed me to create a cherry on top life I, <laughs> I, I i literally my life is better than before i found more peace i i was able to find deep self-love because i really made it a choice to find those things that were in the way um i radically choose self-love in every moment with every food choice all yeah. the things 
um, without fear. So it's like, sometimes I like, I know you, you're also game for that, Stacey, to allow people to find joy in food and yeah. eat. all those choices. Like what makes me feel joyful? Joy energy is healing energy. So, yeah. so that's my inspiration to be open. Uh, what feels healing to you and find that um, attitude and mindset that works for you. And if you want more inspiration to do that, um, come to my website or get my book, Permission to Sparkle. Um, and yeah. I love that, calling it a catalyst versus, mm -hmm. you know, it's just something different. But some people do like the word um, survivor and there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, there's all different names for it. But you have, like what you said, you have to call yourself or do what's best for you and what gives you joy in life. And especially yeah. with food, you know, if a piece of chocolate gives you joy and that's what you want, go for it. You know, you don't want to deprive yourself. And if that little piece of chocolate gives you joy and happiness, mm -hmm. it's okay. You know, one food that has sugar in it or whatever it is, isn't going to change everything. You're, Cancer isn't going to come back. You're not going to get cancer from eating one food yeah. once. Um, so enjoy I, life and enjoy, you know, we want to be happy. Life is short. Yeah. I um, actually nutritionist doctors say that to me too, that it's more important what energy we eat some with. And it's not to say that you can just eat everything all the time. Yeah. And I that doesn't obviously <laughs> be yeah. healthy. There. But um, if you have little moments, and even mm -hmm. my uh, nutritionist that I work with, person, mm -hmm. she also says, like when you eat with joy and with energy, and it's also with good energy. That's something that I also feel in my body, yeah. and you can stay with um, guilt-free um, moment of like, yeah, I'm choosing this, and this feels good, and mm -hmm. that feels good in your body, and that's again healing energy. And to quickly. That's the um, survivor word. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not against it per se. I want people to be. I want you to find what works for you, right? Yeah. So if you feel the word survivor feels good to you, um, and and that's great for me. Um, I chose it not to use it because thriver for me implies life, and survivor has the connotation of I've survived death, as if death is still somewhere there. You know. So for me, it's really. Thriving, that's my empowering word. So, but yeah, be curious, be open and yeah. find your own. I definitely agree with you. I feel like survived, like you just survived it. And like, there's still- that's the, Also like, yeah, the like just made it over the waterline. <laughs> yeah, but there's still like issues and all that. But like thriving means that you're being in a better headspace, a better place in life. I mean, but whatever, you know, like we said, everyone has to use what word works best for them or- but you're you, like you are Astrid, you are whoever you are, you are a person, you're not the cancer, we don't want, you know, you don't have to make it who you are, it's just part of your story, it's a part of your journey. That too, yes, 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 absolutely. Not you, like you don't yeah. introduce yourself, hi, I'm, you know, I can't, no, like you are your person, mm -hmm. like people want to know more about you, not just what disease? You don't just say, hi, I, I have diabetes or I have I know. tension, whatever it is. You don't let it define who you are. It could be part of your life, yeah. part of your journey, but you don't have to make it all about that. Yes, yes, yes. That's a huge, another mindset piece that's great to also notice. Yeah, I actually had a moment where I, where I felt like, oh, I need cancer to be strong, like a subconscious thought, mm -hmm. I one of those thoughts. And I was like, it, it can make us feel strong when we're like, oh, yeah. like one of those writers. Uh, and like, you know, it's like, I, I realized like I can write powerful posts when I got cancer and I can <laughs> people. And suddenly I was like, whoa, wait a minute. I don't need cancer to be yeah. strong. <laughs> I don't need to be healthy. Right. <laughs> ridiculous. So catching those mind stories is really, that's the way to let them yeah. all go. That's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different topic. But yeah, so food is so important because it does nourish us and it makes us feel good, you know? And we want to do, I really believe in the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time putting good nourishing food in your body and 20% of the time, not saying you have to put bad stuff, but it gives you, you know, the opportunity that if you did want chocolate or if you did want a piece of, I don't know, fried chicken, like, it's okay. We don't want you to beat yourself up for it. Life goes on. You enjoyed it. You're happy. 
That's fabulous. So with the cherries, I was thinking, you know, down here, everyone loves salsa, right? You can make salsa with tomatoes. That's like the way to make it. I don't know. But there are so many varieties. So that's why today I was going to make a cherry salsa. So oh, instead of using <laughs> tomatoes, you could use cherries. And cherries are so good for you. They're full of fiber. They have protein in it, and they're low in calories. So a cup of cherries is about 87, 85 calories. So a cup of them. And it has about three grams of uh, fiber in it, which is great because we want 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day. So I bought the whole cherries and I love gadgets and tools. <laughs> so this is my gadget for cherries because they have a seed in them. So yes, if you don't have a cherry cedar, whatever, <laughs> um, you can use a knife and cut around it, but this is just so much easier. So you just poke a hole in it and the seed comes out. So there we go. Yep, you guys see it fall out. <laughs> so these are great snacks to have. And if you wanted, you could even use frozen ones. So if you have frozen ones or you see your cherries going bad, throw them in the freezer so you could save them. So I'm gonna cut them into small pieces. I don't know if you could see, but it's up to you with salsa. If you like it really, really chunky, don't cut it into small pieces. If you like it a lot finer, you could use a food processor, but I was trying to not use ga too many gadgets today. But this is something you could do by hand, so you don't need any tools or um, extra stuff in the house if you don't have. So here is my cup of cherries, and I'm just going to put it in the bowl. I already cut some up. And I did use some frozen cherries and I used some regular cherries. So it has some liquid in it. But like I said, if you wanted, you could just throw all these ingredients in a food processor and process it up and make it as thick or as, you know, less chunky as you want. The next thing is onion. So this is a red onion, which is also great to have. And it's up to you. So I'm not gonna lie. Me and my family were not huge fans of a lot of red onions in salsa. But if you are, you could use more. So, you know, I, can, I have a recipe for this, but it's up to you too. So if you like a lot of red onions, add more. If you don't, you don't even have to add them at all. But I wanted to show you how to cut uh, onions. So I cut it in half and you see I still have like the root left on it. I'm going to leave it so everything stays in place so it doesn't get all like it doesn't move so i'm just going to cut the end piece off i'm going to take the skin off um the paper because it doesn't taste too good we like things that taste good and i like to have a bowl next to me where i throw all my garbage so it's just easy cleanup since i'm not by my garbage can so there we go and then on an onion i don't know if you could see but it has lines so you could use it as like following the lines and that's how you could dice. Let me see if I can move this closer. So here, there we go. So you see the lines? I'm gonna cut it on the lines in that angle. Cause sometimes I know on the Food Network they show you to cut it diagonal and then slice it, but sometimes that could get messy. So if we take it and just follow the lines there we go. And then we get small little dice. <clears throat> so it's really easy. I'm going to do it. put onions as cherries. That is really cool. Yeah, it's great. Because it adds like a, I don't know, like a bite to it. So I just like a little bit of the onions. So you can use whatever onions you want. I'm going to just put this over here for now. Um, just so we clean the spot up a little bit. And then I have a jalapeno pepper. So one other thing about the onions is the biggest thing is with the prying, you want to use a sharp knife. Using a sharp knife will help you not pry cutting an onion. That's the big sharp knife. My husband just sharpened my knives last night. 
Um, and the next thing is a jalapeno pepper. So once again, it's up to you. If you like it very spicy, add more pepper. If you don't, use less. But the spice is in that white part and the seeds. So you want to take that out if you don't want it spicy. So I am definitely going to remove them because Gavin doesn't like things too spicy. And then another thing, don't touch your eyes after you touch a jalapeno because it can burn your eyes. So you want to be careful if you want to wear gloves, you can. But I'm just going to chop up a little bit of jalapeno and put it in there. There we go. And spice could help with weight loss too because it helps boost the metabolism. So having spicy things is great. And then the last thing, I'm, well, two more things I'm going to add is, my favorite, is cilantro. And some people, they, they eat cilantro and it tastes like <laughs> soap to them, but that is all the genetic thing. But I'm going to, my family loves cilantro, so once again, I'm going to use a lot of it. And I washed it, and I am going to slice it up into small pieces. There you go. And just add it to the bowl. So all we have are cherries, red onions, jalapenos, and cilantro. And my last ingredient is a lime because we want to add a little um, citrus to it. And you're, you could add lemon or the lime. It adds vitamin C to it. And plus your cherries have iron in it. So if you're iron deficient, cherries are great to add. And plus the vitamin C will help absorb it better. So it is a great thing to add. And there we go. We just add a little bit of the lime to it. And whoop, one thing I forgot is a spoon. And we just mix it up. And we're done. <laughs> That's it. How easy is that? So now we have cherry salsa. Now that I know the next question is, what can you do with it? <laughs> right? Like, okay. Well, think about what you do with, with regular salsa. So you could have it with chips. If you wanted to add it to chicken and have it on top of chicken, you could do that. So it's very versatile. If you wanted to make a burrito or a taco, why not? Instead of using tomato. But if you wanted to add tomato to it, go ahead. If you wanted to add avocados to it, be my guess. Like, there's no rules and regulations. If you wanted to add beans to it, to give it more fiber. I mean, using recipes are a great tool where you could make it the way you like. So what do you think of this recipe? Did this come to your, did this make your dream like a reality or? <laughs> really cool. I love the innovation that you brought something that opens people's minds also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You never thought of cherry salsa? No, never. And that's the, <laughs> That's what I talked about earlier with mindset. I want to acknowledge that you had so many people join and pop out in between, but like you had a bunch of people from all over the place. And I posted that people can ask questions. Um, Stacey and I, we will answer any questions afterward. Just tag us uh, questions around mindset or cooking that help you with or after cancer. Um, ask away. Yeah. So I'm excited to eat this tonight with some... I don't know. I think I'm going to do chicken with it and do tacos. Cool. That sounds exciting. Oh, that yeah. sounds really <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, I'm so glad you guys joined us. If you have any questions, like Astrid said, put it in the comment section. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube and you want to see more videos, just subscribe to the channel. We're always here. And yeah, let us know what do you want to see next month? What recipe, what dream did you have about a food? Let us know. We're here to make your dreams a reality. And also my cooking class is up and running. I'm so excited for the next, I think, three days. Yeah, till the 31st, I have my founder, founder special where you get $300 off plus you get a lifetime membership. So any videos nice. I add... Anything that we do, you get access to it. Otherwise, it is a 12-week course. So I'm doing it for the rest of the month, but I'm so excited. You get to learn how to cook with vegetables and fruit. And 
you know, during treatment too, you don't, sometimes you don't have the energy to cook. So there's a whole section on convenience cooking of what you could do that are in your cabinet and in your refrigerator, just to make your life easier. Cooking doesn't have to be hours in the kitchen. I mean, look how quickly this took a salsa. Now you could put it in the refrigerator and be done with it. Or if you want and you want to get fancy, you could can it and have it for the future and use it. Nice. So cooking doesn't have to take long periods of time. It, it could be very easy, even buying convenient foods. So if you're interested, send me a DM or put a message in the comments that you're interested in the class and I will get back to you. But um, Astrid, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, I just want to tie it together for people who yeah. didn't do the whole thing. So I encourage you all, if you're curious about thriving with or after cancer, to watch the whole thing because yeah. it brought more than nutrition to this game. Like I started, I talked about mindset and the bigger picture and how you can thrive um, before. And um, we had cherries as a metaphor today. I'm bringing that back because um, you can. Uh, we, I created a, a cherry on top life through cancer. I saw it as a catalyst. And so it's an interesting, um, playful metaphor to is use cherries. And, and I often, uh, from a spiritual perspective, I like to do mini rituals. So I almost feel that um, the recipe that you mm -hmm. made with cherries, <laughs> that could be a small ritual for anyone who wants to choose to thrive to say like, yes, I'm, I'm choosing a cherry on top life, whatever that means, there's no guarantee yeah. for the future, right? But I can choose it moment by moment to create the best life I can in each moment and, and then make that cherry salsa and that can be <laughs> a ritual act and eating it mindfully. <laughs> from, this is really so, um, so I want to say like anyone who wants to find more what I do, I actually have a Thriver workshop program where um, I, I help uh, women going through treatment right now uh, to go through it uh, while uh, thriving and finding your Thriver powers and overcoming those inner fears and turning them into joy and accessing your healing powers um, from inside. Uh, and my website is AstridMuller.com where you can go find my book as well awesome. find out. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for having me yes thank, thank you for joining and i can't wait to see you next month but i'm definitely going to talk to you before that <laughs> in your groups so yes if you have any questions put it in the comments so glad you joined us and have a fabulous rest of your day <laughs> yeah much wellness to all of you bye, bye.